High Adventure. Tonight's suspense adventure by Ron Evans is entitled Twenty Fathoms Deep. Can you see the light? Yes, sir. On the starboard beam. Good. We're inside the breakwater. Oh, what a night. Cool as charity and a fog as thick as that soup that I've just drunk. Thank heavens I'll be spending tonight in my own bed. Aye, and the fog will keep the jerry planes away, so you'll not be disturbed. Steer 2-2-0. Two, two, oh. Steering 2-2-0. Two, two, oh. Bring half ahead, Hugh. Well, it's been a good trip, Hugh. Aye, it has that, Skipper. A 20% above average home. Damn this fog. See anything to starboard, look out. Nothing, sir. Oh, we should see the fair lane boy in a tick. Ah, there it is. Steer two to nine. Slow ahead, Hugh. Steering two to nine, sir. Oh, we'll be alongside in ten minutes. I'll nip into the hounds and land before going home. Will you join me? Aye, aye. I think a pint of bitter would go down well. Like the starboard, sir. What? Well, there shouldn't be. A sewer life, sir. Approaching. Hey, it's a ship. The damn fool. Hard aboard. Bring full ahead. Pull ahead! Oh, damn it! We'll never clear! What, kids? Look out! 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 Enjoy the best of both worlds. Only two hours drive from Johannesburg and Pretoria and half an hour by air. The magnificent Sundown Ranch Hotel and Lion Park, just 10 kilometers from the Pilansburg Game Reserve and Sun City Resort. It offers an exciting escape from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. Reasonable rates, excellent food, friendly service and comfortable air-conditioned rooms. It will ensure a memorable stay. Activities include tennis, squash, horse riding, the lion park, and much, much more. Call now to make your reservation on 014-573-1000. That's 014-573-1000. Or visit their website at www.restinations.co.za forward slash Sundown Ranch. The Sundown Ranch Hotel and Lion Park. Two worlds in one. I was mate on board the trawler Lady Codling on that evening when the coastal ferryboat hit her amidships. I was thrown clean into the cold water of Mirkham Harbor by the impact as the trawler rolled over and capsized. She sank within seconds. Minutes later, I was picked up by the ferry, which had suffered only minor damage. It was only later, when I was landed, that I found that two of our crew were missing. Eddie Kaplan, the engineer, and Tom Walsh, the fireman. Wrapped in blankets and with a mug of hot cocoa in my hand, I joined our skipper, Captain Sinclair, in the port captain's office. There's no doubt the ferry was to blame for collision, Captain Sinclair. Still, we'll have to leave that to inquiry. Now, I'm bothered about my two men who've been lost. Not the results of any damned inquiry. Aye, that's understandable. You're always close to your men. They were both in the engine room. They didn't have a chance. Oh, well, I'll send a diver down first thing in the morning. Lady Codling is only 20 fathoms down, so there's a possibility of salvaging her. What with the war and other problems, though, it could take weeks, perhaps even months, before we could get equipment here to do the job. Still, the main channel into the harbor hasn't been blocked, so the delay won't be too serious. Excuse me, you know, but I've been thinking back to three years ago when a Mersey tug capsized and a man was trapped in the engine room. They got him out alive the next day. I, I remember that, Hugh. You, you're thinking that... Kaplan and Walsh could be alive. Aye, it's possible. You're darn right. Aye, she rolled over clean and, and the ferry hit us forward of the engine room casing. 
Well, what about it, Captain Wishart? What do you mean? Well, can't you get hold of a diver and, and send him down now? At night? Oh, now that would be very difficult. Damn it all, man. Those men could be alive down there. If that were true, there's no way we could get to them. How can you know that before the divers made a report? It's 20 fathoms, Captain Sinclair. With no tackle or equipment in Mirkham, that would be of any use. Lady Codlin is one of the biggest trawlers in the coast, as well you know. Well, there must be something you could do. It would take days to get rescue equipment brought here. And by then, your men would be dead anyway, if indeed they are alive now, which I very much doubt. Well, we've got to find out. Now, where can the diver be found? Well, it's after the question. Is it if he's agreeable to go down? Well, it would mean towing the diving platform and finding a crew to man it. Well, it's got to be done. Now, where can we get hold of the diver? Well, at, uh, at any guess, he... He's in the hounds and lion right now. His name? Reynolds. Dougie Reynolds. I'll go and tackle him, Skipper. Please do. Meanwhile, I'll help Captain Wishart to get the diving platform manned. You went down in 20 fathoms, you say? Well, there can't be much hope, you know. A couple of thousand to one. Well, it's worth the try. Well, I don't mind. But you're going to have a heck of a job getting old Wishart to it, Well, Captain Sinclair's working on him right now. I finish your pint, and by the time we get down to the office, I'll have the diving platform organized. Okay. Twenty fathoms. It's going to be pretty tough. Hey, hey, but not as tough as it is for those men if they're alive and trapped down there. Yes, but I think you're going to be disappointed on that score. Has stopped rising, Tom. Not that it makes much difference. If we don't drown, we're going to run him well freeze to death. Oh, try and keep your pecker up, lad. For what? They can't get us out of here. You never know. They don't even know we're here. For sure, they'll send a diver down. If we listen, we might hear him. In a few days, Tom. Oh, for heaven's sake, Tom. We're alive and unheard, aren't we? Let's be thankful for that much at this stage. Yeah. Oh, I suppose you're right. Yeah. If only we could see, though. Perhaps it's better we can't. <laughs> now he's being cheerful. Hey, hand me that spanner. Hey. Oh. Here you are. But, uh, what, what are you going to do with it? Well, I think we should bang the bulkhead every five minutes. You never know. <laughs> every five minutes. It ain't going to be easy to tell the time, Danny, is it? Oh, don't be so darn thick, Tom. We'll have to use guesswork. We'll take it in turns. If anybody is it, they'll know it's us, not just something loose rattling. Tired of hammering this damn bulkhead. Uh, it must be time for my turn again. Here, give me the spanner. Uh, here you are. Hey, 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 did you hear that? It's someone knocking from outside. But knock back, quick! Uh, help! Can, can, you, can you hear us? Ahoy there! Hello! At least one of them's alive down there. Heaven be praised for that. Where? The engine room? Oh, must be. You hear that, Captain Wishart? Now we'll have to mount a rescue operation. How? I've told you a dozen times there's no equipment available in Meekham. And there's no hope of getting any for days. There's got to be a way. Was the trawler bottom up? Yes. Uh, there's a chance the air pocket could be a big one. It was a big engine room. And if it's an air pocket that size, they could have enough to last them a day at least. To prolong the agony? Well, that's no way to talk. Tell me, Mr. Reynolds, is there any way you can get in there to them? I'm sorry if it's impossible. The accommodation has been telescoped and squeezed into the mud. Uh, could a hole be cut through the bulkhead from the outside? Not at 120 feet. Wish art. I wish you'd help us think of a solution instead of staring out of the window. I see the fog has lifted and it's nine o'clock. Not too late for an air raid. Look, let's not worry about that now. 
Instead, think of those two poor blighters trapped down there. Ah, there. I thought so. Herman Goring never misses a trick. I'm afraid we'll have to put out the diving platform lights until it's over. Are you serious? To hell with the bombs. We're trying to save two men. I can't allow lights on the harbor. Regulations. A lot more than two lives will be lost if we light up the targets for the Nazi channel. Hey, there's the ACAC having a go at them. They're probably heading inland for Leeds or Sheffield. Hey, Roberts! Douse the lights! All of them! Can we resume when they've passed over? Resume what? For the life of me, I can't see what can be done. Can you think of anything, Mr. Reynolds? Well, not without the right equipment. It's like Captain Wishart says. It will take days to get it here. Oh, dear. It looks like they're giving the town a bit of a pounding. Uh, I must give the wife a ring and tell her. Rachel, did you see that? See what? That German plane. It came in low and was cupped in the searchlight. It hit a barrage balloon cable and spun out of control. Look, you can see it coming down. It's going to crash close by. Here it comes. Smack on the fishing jetty! Yes. Where the lady coddling would have been berthed, Captain Sinclair. She'd have been a goner for sure, even if it had got her alongside. He must have had a full load of bombs. It's knocked down a warehouse on the railway bridge. So, Lady Coddling was a, a doomed ship. We must have taken a jinx on board this trip. It was a sickening sight, and for a while we stared at the flaming warehouse from on board the diving platform, feeling no sympathy for the luckless crew of the plane. It was the misfortune of war. And I know that Captain Sinclair's mind was only on his men, trapped far below our feet. You know, I always thought barrage balloons were a waste of time. Well, the crew of the German bomber now know differently. Cable must have chucked the blighter's wing in off. Well, I suppose the balloons must be effective to a degree, otherwise they wouldn't bother to send them up. It must be quite expensive. All right, though. all right. We're not here to discuss the merits of barrage balloons. Let's think of a way to free those men. Oh, I'm still waiting for you to come up with a feasible solution, Captain. Barrage balloons, eh? Yes, barrage balloons. Please, Mr. Ramos. Just might work. What are you talking about? Look... I've just thought of an idea that might just work. In fact, I don't see why it won't. We'd appreciate you telling us. Look, it sounds mad, I know, but... Well, here it is for what it's worth. Say we sank a deflated barrage balloon, two even, down under the Lady Codling and attached them with horses. Then, if we can get air hoses long enough, we could inflate them. Well, I don't see why that wouldn't surface the trawler. Well, for a while, anyway. Long enough to get the men out, at least. What a weird idea. Well, what's wrong with it? Well, I can't say. But I'm sure you'll find a snag. Why, Joe, I think it's a splendid idea. What do you think, Hugh? Ah, well, it's definitely worth the try. Well, where will you get the darn barrage balloon from? Major Fleming is a good friend of mine. And he's got 15 barrage balloon lorries under his command. I'm sure he'd help out in an emergency like this. Aye, and you'll need a couple of good compressors to inflate them and long hoses to reach the bottom. Fred Norris, uh, he's another pal of mine, is general manager of Stevens Factory. They're using armored air hoses all the time. Even if they don't have one long enough, I know Fred will fit a few together somehow. Aye, and what about the underwater work? You can't manage it all by yourself, Reynolds. Yes, that's a point. We've got enough diving equipment for three men. George Bishop and Bill Gregor. Oh, really? Bishop is retired and the other fellow hurt his leg and can hardly walk. Ah, as long as they can use their hands. Well, do we do it or just talk? I need a phone to start the ball rolling. Oh, I'll have the diving platform towed back to the quay. You can use my office. Yes. Yes, inflate them under the water. <laughs> no, Major, I'm not mad. 
And this is a matter of life and death. Two men, yes. Oh, we know for certain that they're alive. Two balloons at least. Yes, that's the all clear signal. No, no, don't worry about that. Uh, I can organize the air hoses. Or rather, I hope so. Yeah. Uh, no, it's going to be a long job, so the sooner the better. Yes, an extra one would be fine. Yes. Yes, and the lorries. <laughs> Thanks, Major. Well, they'll be here in less than an hour. Now, let's see what Fred Norris can do. Come on. Come on, come on. Ah, oh, uh, this is an urgent call. Give me Mirkum 8476. Yes, 8476. And hurry, please. Come on, come on. Oh, Fred, yeah, I know it's late. <laughs> no, I'm not phoning from the hounds and lion. Is there anybody at the factory? Oh, yes, of course. You, you're working around the clock. Okay, now look, we need two or three armoured hoses, 120 feet or more in length. Can you do it? Fred, no, I'm not joking. Fred, I'm trying to save two men's lives. Look, I'll explain, but don't ask too many questions. There's no time to waste. Between a mixture of bullying, pleading and cajoling, Dougie Reynolds got what he wanted. At two in the morning, both divers had arrived and were lending a willing hand. The lorries had arrived with barrage balloons deflated into enormous folds of silver silky material. The soldiers on the lorries also turned to and helped where they could. Over at the factory, Fred Norris was working frantically to fit together three giant lengths of air hose. Meanwhile, two lorries arrived from the factory carrying two huge compressors. And while all this was going on, Dougie Reynolds went down to the sun controller to make certain that the men were still alive. Tom. Tom. You're not going to sleep, are you? It's... It's the foul air. Yeah, yeah. I can't help it. I'm feeling dizzy. You, you, you got to help it. you got to fight in that. Oh, Eddie, what for? If I've got to die, I'd rather do it in my sleep. Now look, I'd be crazy. Don't even talk about dying. We're going to be all right. Now listen to me. They know we're here. Now it's it's just a matter of time. Hold out, lad. Yeah. I, I was dozing off, thinking of me mum and dad. They'd be worrying, Eddie. Dad works on the docks and knows we were coming in tonight. Hey. What's that? She's breaking up. Uh, don't get excited, Tom. We'd feel movement if that was happening. Uh, something heavy knocked up against the outside up for us. Such as? Well, they, they could be making an attempt to get at us. From up in the bow? Don't be daft. Now look, something's going on. And whatever it is, it can't make our present predicament worse, can it? I don't know so much. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. Maybe you ain't noticed, but the water level's come up a bit. Hey? Well, when I dangle my leg over the grating, I, I can touch it. I couldn't do that before. Hey. Blimey, you're right. What was that you said about things not being able to get worse? Night. It's getting daylight already. I am well aware of it. How much longer, Reynolds? We've got two balloons tightly lashed under the bow and stern sections. A bit of third could take another three hours. So I'm wondering whether we shouldn't try and lift her now. Two might be enough. Uh, I'm worried in case she rolls over onto her side. For the air had come out and the water go in. And that would mean curtains for both men. Aye, but it's a risk we'll have to take. I heard that, you. We'll take no risk for their lives. But as the diver says, there's no guarantee your ship won't roll over on his side. I see. 
then the answer to that problem is not to fully inflate the balloons. That way, they'll hug closer to the decks. Oh, that's a good idea, Captain. But then will two balloons be enough? Have those fellows down there got enough air to last out for the next three hours while we fit another? Well, I think we should try it and see. I agree. Okay. We're all ready to start pumping. Have you any idea how long it'll take to inflate the balloons? Well, the army sergeant over there reckons about 30 minutes. Then I suggest no more than 15 minutes pumping before a check is made that the balloons are inflating even. Now, don't worry about that, sir. I'll be going down to watch the whole process. I'll keep in constant touch with the platform. Good man. Very risky, I must say, Reynolds. Blessed trawler might roll right over on top of you. Well, that's the idea of me being down there. To make sure she doesn't roll. Oh, as you wish. It's your neck. Okay, start pumping. You, Harrison, keep an eye out for the bubbles. Uh, Wilson, give me a hand with the helmet. We're in the rare old fix now. The water's up to the grating. And we can't get any higher. The air must be leaking out somewhere. It's the only way the water could rise like this. Hey. Did, you, did you feel that? Yeah. Boy, I did. I felt it and I, I can hear it too. Oh, Eddie, the old boat's cracking up under the pressure. I know it is. She shifted. That's what she'd done. She definitely shifted, lad. What would make her shift? Eh? It was dead calm when we sank. Well... The bottom could be uneven, you know. You mean we could be stepping into deeper water? I just don't know, Laddie. Hear it. I mean... That noise is coming from forward and aft. Slip it, be damned. We're lifted, eh? Can't you feel it, Tom? The stern end is coming up. <laughs> Things in life are obvious and easy. If you have a business providing a good service or selling a product, you need to let people know. But how do you do that? Easy. Just tell them here on SpringbokRadio.com. Internet radio is about talking to people in their own homes. Your message becomes part of the sound they've chosen to listen to. To find out more about advertising on springbokradio.com, contact Dave Dupria on Johannesburg 011-678-5176 or for outside South Africa 27116785176 or email Dave at springbokradio.com. From under the water, Dougie Reynolds reported that all was going well. At first, his two colleagues had to join him on the bottom because one of the balloons was inflating unevenly. But that was quickly sorted out, and the sunken controller was now nestling neatly on the two gigantic air cushions. On several occasions, large pockets of air surfaced in a mass of seething bubbles. But Dougie reported that his knocks on the hull had been answered by the trapped men. Hey, did you hear that, Wilson? Okay, I'll signal the compressors. Any sign of a list, Doggy? She's as straight up as a guardsman. Now just keep your fingers crossed till she stays that way. Okay. Okay, that was quick. The bar's coming up now. Same pressure on both pumps. Wilson, full pressure, both pumps. Did you hear that, Captain? She's on her way up. Just play that the balloon lashings hold. Yeah, the higher she comes and the less strain on them. Yes, yes, true. But then the pressure on the material of the balloons will increase. Anyway, let's not think of the worst. I'm coming up. It's so muddy I can hardly see anything. Okay, I'll have you heaved up. She's got to come up slowly. I reckon she will if nothing goes wrong. Get the top of the building here to stand by. A 
have caused the operation to raise the lady coddling with the talk of Mirkum. Crowds had gathered along the quay sides, far outnumbering the police who were trying to keep them back. But it was a silent crowd. Necks craned as they stared out into the harbour, and the atmosphere was charged with suspense. Word had mysteriously gone around that the lady coddling was on her way up, and the police gave up trying to control the crowd and joined them. It was hardly discernible at first, like a finger sticking up from the calm water. But I recognized it as the bottom of the rudder, and then, like a surfacing whale, up came the keel. The crowds began to cheer as they gave way to the emotion of the moment. Already the tug was maneuvering in close to the lady coddling's hull to burn a hole through the plates. When I turned and looked at Captain Sinclair, tears were unashamedly running down his weather-beaten cheeks. It's going to be all right, Hugh. I know it is. I, I know, Skipper. I think you can relax now. It's, it's been a long night. A nightmare, Hugh. And it's not over yet. It will be soon, though. Oh, but no. What about my poor ship, eh? I won't rest until she's been salvaged and is fit for sea again. High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal. 